I wonder why Face the Nation forgot to ask Ron Paul what he plans to do about our energy abuse problem. Maybe it's because they're financed by the oil companies. Republican presidential candidate Ron Paul, congressman from uh, uh, the Houston area. Uh, congressman, I have to be honest with you. Uh, until you got uh, on the Internet last week and raised about $4 million, I don't think a lot of people took you very seriously. Uh, how in the world did you do that? I guess the first confession I have to make is I didn't do it. My uh, campaign uh, people did it. The people who volunteered put it all together. Our campaign had... Did you know this was We knew happen? it was going on, and of course we didn't discourage it, but we had no control of it. We didn't organize it, and one individual decided to have a special day, which was November 5th. And who was that? Um, this he, person? He's... His name is Kleiman, uh, uh, and, and he's from Miami. I talked to him once on the phone to thank him, but I've never met him. He's never been involved in politics. And he heard about me, about the war issue, looked up the website. He said, boy, I agree with everything he says. It's the first time he's ever gotten involved. He says, I think I'll raise him some money. And uh, he did it. And uh, it just goes to show, I think, how powerful the message is that we have. I, I don't think it's me, myself. I don't think it's... Uh, uh, the organization as much as the philosophy of limited government and freedom that people are just starved for. Well, let me just ask you, you and I are probably close to the same age. Uh, did you know anything about the Internet or much about it when uh, you got into this campaign? I would say uh, pretty much I wouldn't say that I was anything like a computer expert. I don't know how to program or anything. But I've used a computer, especially since I went back to Congress in 97. That's when I got my first computer, and I used it a lot for basically research. I mean, it's just to me unbelievable what you can find out on the internet it's very interesting uh, you have advocated pulling out of iraq that's right uh, what do you feel about iran do you see that as a threat to this country no i think you don't we're, no i think iran i think our policy toward iran is a threat that's what i fear you know i fear that tomorrow we might bomb iran that really scares me but iran doesn't have a nuclear weapon our cia said they might and they're thinking about it, but they've committed no crimes. Uh, matter of fact, uh, the UN inspectors say that uh, they they have had no evidence that they're working on a nuclear weapon. So the fact that we might bomb them, that our other candidates say that they won't take anything off the table, even the nuclear first strike, that's what really scares me. If you don't, if we don't like a hundred dollar oil, wait till hits two hundred dollar oil. If we bomb Iran, so we just leave them there and let them go about their business. And if they get a nuclear weapon, no, we'll... we have a more sensible policy. We talk to them and we uh, trade with them. We remove the sanctions. I mean, the Soviets had forty thousand of them. Mm -hmm. And you know, I was called to military duty in nineteen sixty two during the Cuban crisis the height of the Cold War. And we won the Cold War. We didn't have to go to a nuclear war. We won that by being strong and talking to the Soviets. We talked to Khrushchev. At the height of that crisis, we agreed to take missiles out We of also Turkey. had as many nuclear weapons as they had. Right, and we have a lot more than Iran well, has. Iran about, has none. <laughs> what about Pakistan? They've got a bunch. Yeah, and look what, Do you see them as a threat? Uh, I see our policy as a threat because we've been subsidizing. And here we have evidence that they've been turning over information to the North Koreans. We reward people who get nuclear weapons. The Pakistanis have had a nuclear weapon. They have a military dictatorship. They overthrew an elected government. And what do we do? We send them $11 billion. So why shouldn't Iran want to get a nuclear weapon? We might send them more money. I mean, the, the Indians have some, so we give them money. So I think we need to not reward people with nuclear weapons, and we need to neutralize our hostility because we build up incentives for those individuals to want to get a nuclear weapon, and I think the whole thing backfires on us. Well, let me... Uh, I want to just get your uh, take on what you think the government ought to do. I, you've already said you're anti-war. We know you're anti-abortion. Uh, you're anti-drug administration. You're anti-Medicare. I wrote all this down. Uh, let's see, you're anti-income tax. You want to do away with that. You're anti-United Nations. You're anti-World Bank. Uh, you're anti-International Monetary Fund. And uh, there must be some other things that you're well, against. But what it, is it that you see that the government ought to do besides deliver the mail? Well, every, everything that you have said, you can turn that into a pro. I'm pro-Constitution. I'm pro-liberty. I'm pro-sound money. I'm pro-states' rights. I'm pro-liberty. I want people to take care of themselves. I, I'm, I'm uh, pro-free markets and private property. I'm pro-Second Amendment. 
So every time they say you're anti something means you have to be pro something. And uh, I think that what is happening today is that people have lost confidence in the government and they see that what I stand for and what our campaign stands for, this is what has made America great. Freedom is what made America great, not welfareism and socialism and government controls and invading our homes and loss of our privacy. That is what the people don't like. We're going to take a little break here. We'll come back and talk about this some more. In a minute. This portion of Face the Nation is sponsored by the people of America's oil and natural gas industry. Learn more at energytomorrow.org. Back again with Republican presidential candidate Ron Paul. You do not see the threats to this country that so many others uh, see. Do you think we ought to even have a military congressman? Oh, obviously, that's one of the responsibilities we have as national defense, and I think that's where we have fallen down. Uh, we defended Seoul, Korea better on 9-11 than we did Washington, D.C., so I think we're in the wrong places and we forget about our own country, and I think we're bankrupting our country today because we're every place. We have an empire. We're in 130 countries. We have 700 bases overseas, and we're building new ones, 14 new ones in Iraq. This is why we're in trouble. We have a weakened national defense, and also we're antagonizing those people that we sort of invade and occupy. So well, what do you do? We build a wall around this country and put all our military here, or you don't and, want them well, anyplace else? It wouldn't hurt to bring the military home, but I'm bring not. Bring them all home. Sure. Korea, how long should we stay in Korea? How long should we stay in Europe? Why should we give them that subsidies? Why are we in Japan? I'd bring them home. But I'm not an isolationist. I don't believe in walls. I believe in free trade and maximum travel, sharing of ideas, diplomacy, and talking to people. It's actually the opposite of isolation. Today, we have a sort of a neo-isolationism. We have less friends and more enemies. We go on the own. We don't talk to people. And I think that's the wrong way to go. I think we could have a much stronger national defense if we changed our policy. I'm not just for changing tactics in Iraq. I'm, changing for, change, I'm for changing our foreign policy that has gone astray, not in this administration, but maybe over the last hundred years. Uh, you also want to go back to the gold standard. Yeah. Why? Because uh, paper doesn't make any sense. Uh, uh, you know, people sort of make fun of the gold standard, but what people should be making fun of is this idea that if government comes up short, they just print it. And that's what we've been doing essentially since 1971. It encourages big government. It is the creation of inflation. It causes the business cycle, it causes all our bubbles, and it undermines the middle class. It makes poor people pay an invisible tax, which is called inflation. There's a transfer of wealth when you have paper money from the middle class and the poor to the wealthy. That's why you have billionaires on Wall Street and you have people in the middle class now they can't they can't make ends meet and why people on retirement benefits their cost of living is going up much faster than their income. So inflation that is fiat money the opposite of gold is very very destructive to the political and economic process. One final question are you going to go back to the internet and have another of these uh, fundraising days? I'm not, but I hear there's another one coming on the 16th. I think it has something to do with the Boston Tea Party. So I'll tell you what, there may be another big day, but uh, and I will be encouraging them. But uh, just because of the laws, uh, they're independent expenditures. I don't know what they're doing, but I mean, it, it sounds great. So if we have another $4 million day, I guess it won't hurt our campaign. About 30 seconds left. Uh, do you really sincerely believe that you have a chance to get the nomination? Well, I really believe if your name is on the ballot, there is a chance, you know, that that might happen. But I'm very realistic. But compared to 12 months ago, I would say that uh, it's much more likely now. Uh, but I also know what, what the odds are. But uh, I'll tell you what, don't try and tell my supporters that there's not a chance because they believe it. And uh, matter of fact, they're making me uh, a, a more credible candidate and about convincing me that, uh, you know, I'm taking that risk. My name is out there. I may well win. All right. <laughs> Congressman, thank you so much for joining us. This thank morning. you. Back with a final word. This portion of Face the Nation was sponsored by ConocoPhillips. Energy for tomorrow.